This is the NBA Wire with Mateo Chang, episode 19. Hey, never trust someone who puts in the milk first and then the cereal. Seriously. Inspirational NBA talk with successful alumni to motivate you during your application run. We go behind the scenes of every story, talk business, and show you why it's worthwhile to never give up on your NBA dream. And now, here's your host with the most, Matteo Chang. What's up, citizens of The Wire? Welcome back to yet another fantastic episode of The NBA Wire. Today, I am very happy and ecstatic to have as our guest, Thais Xavier. Thais just got accepted into INSEAD um, for her one-year program. She will be graduating in 2015. Uh, a little bit about her background. She graduated in business administration. She's also been working for Accenture for about seven years now as a consultant. Um, and on a personal note, she is a sport, sports enthusiast, uh, more specifically a triathlete, which is pretty cool because not many people can really be a triathlete. You know, it's, it's, it takes a lot of, uh, of energy, focus, and concentration. Thais, thank you so much for being here with us. I'm so happy that you can be part of this initiative. I've given our listeners a brief introduction about you, something you were excited about at work right now. Um, could you tell us a little bit more about what it is? Yeah, sure. First, uh, I have to thank you for this opportunity, Matt, and adding on to my new project. Actually, it's a very interesting project. We're doing the setup of a company, a new company in the loyalty market, which is a market that has a lot of growth potential in Brazil. And the fact that it is about a startup, it gives me the opportunity of exerting a lot of creativity and also to participate in discussions with very senior people. I'm very excited about that. And we are already selling the next phase of the project. Oh, nice. That sounds very interesting. So, you know, this is, this sounds like a big project and even, you know, right before you you go away for INSEAD. <laughs> yeah, don't tell me about that. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> no, because I'm working a lot. I can imagine. That's what, you know, that's exactly what I wanted to say is just, I mean, once you're accepted into a school, there's so many things you need to do. But then at the meantime, you are also working on such a big project like this and are you able to practice your your tri triathlon um, exercises? Yeah, um, I guess it's really about waking up early. <laughs> so lately, I've been working. I've been uh, waking up four thirty, five a.m. Wow. But yeah, but I'm I'm happy. I mean, I'm doing what I like, so it's really rewarding. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, it's a little bit easier when you enjoy it. Yeah. Well, Thais, before we, we, we get deeper into your journey, into your story, uh, we like to start off with a motivational quote. Now, do you have one uh, that you live by? And could you tell us your quote and something from your experience as an example? There is a quote I like a lot, which is, there is no glory without sacrifice. Yeah, as you said, I practice triathlon and I've been training running for about three years and I'm, I've learned from my experience in sports that you can't really improve your personal records and your performance without working really hard and pushing your limits. And I guess this quote is also about my MBA process uh, story, because uh, in 2012, I decided I wanted to apply. It's really common for people that work in consulting companies to go to MBAs and it became a dream for me. And in that year, I decided it was the time. And so I, I started the process. I chose uh, seven schools. I started the GMAT process. It was uh, really hard for me because I had to spend five months uh, studying and I had to do the test three times so that I could get the grade I wanted. Mm -hmm. It was a very extenuating process. Uh, also, when I got the GMAT uh, grade, I studied for the TOEFL and I, I did the essays and the other parts of the process. And it was really frustrating when about a year after that, I found out that I hadn't been admitted to any of the schools I had applied. Oh. 
Uh. Uh, by that time, I had many of my friends going to, to some uh, of the MBAs uh, they had applied. My boyfriend was also going to his MBA. So um, it was very frustrating. And I spent some months uh, in 2013 really thinking about the story. But then I realized that it was still a dream and that it was really important for me to do this thing. So I realized that I had to train harder to improve the weak points of my ap application. And I decided to take the challenge again. And hopefully it has worked. Yeah, and I think it has. I mean, you've been accepted now. So, <laughs> yeah, so wait, yeah. wait a minute. So your boyfriend went on to do his MBA then? Yeah, actually, we started to study together. And yeah, he got into Babson. Oh. He's living in Boston now. Ah, oh, he's living. So how's that long distance relationship there? Uh, yeah, it's hard. <laughs> it's tough. Yeah, I can say it's easy, but I guess you can make it work. I mean, technology helps a lot. Yeah, I bet. I bet you guys Skype all the time. Yeah, and I also have visited him sometimes. And actually now he's in Brazil because of his summer job. So we're making this work. Yeah, yeah. But now you're going to be across the pond, you know, basically across the, you know. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that's another chapter of the story. <laughs> I know, I know. Now, is is he doing a one-year or two-year program over at Babson? Uh, two-year uh, program. He um, finishes uh, the course in March. Yeah, no, sorry, May of next year. May of next year. Okay, so there's only a short period of time before you guys get back together again. Yeah, yeah, sure. Awesome, <laughs> awesome. So... I'm just going to repeat the quote. There's no glory without sacrifice. And this is a Filipino proverb, which really does make sense. I mean, there's no glory without sacrifice. And by Thais's description and, and story that you, you're telling me right now, it sounds like there have been many sacrifices, personal and professional ones, in order to achieve MBA glory. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> You know, I can say I'm in glory right now. <laughs> yeah. So how does it feel now that you got accepted, you know, after all of these, you know, these difficulties? Um, yeah, it's it's still hard to believe, I must say that. But it's kind of funny because there's also a lot to think about when you get admitted. Mm -hmm. um, I thought that when I I, I, I received an uh, INSEAD's call, I would only think about, uh, I don't know, getting there. I didn't think there would be so many steps before that. Thinking about the visa, I think it's really good that business schools have actually a website in which they explain exactly what you have to do after you were admitted. So it's really helpful. And it's also helpful, I think, to talk about uh, these matters with former students and people that are already there. They can, they can give you really good hints. And there's something funny, actually, that I remember right now. Social media is really incredible because five days after I received an INSEAD's call, I was just uh, being invited to join a WhatsApp group uh -huh. from INSEAD admins from all over the world. So we are already in contact Oh, wow. So you're talking to INSEAD admits from like other countries? Yeah, my future colleagues, basically. Wow. How's that like? I mean, do you talk to people? What countries are they from? <laughs> they are really from all over the world because uh, INSEAD actually says that they're the business school of the world. And that's really true. I mean, when you see that people are in this chat, I mean, there are almost, I don't know, 50 people. And you see the, their names, you can even guess where they're from. I mean... There are people from India, Italy, Kuwait, uh, France, uh, other countries in Latin America, U.S., and, and so on. Wow. It's really crazy. No, yeah. that is, INSEAD is a very international school. I mean, they have such an amazing diversity. I think for anyone who's looking for an international experience, I mean, INSEAD is one of the best places you can go to. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, so... Let's, let's kind of rewind a little bit. Let's talk about before your MBA program. I know you've told me a little bit about some of your difficulties and challenges, but out of everything, what was the hardest part of the application process and how'd you deal with it? Okay, I guess that the hardest part was really not being admitted because, I don't know, I thought I had done my best in every part of the process. I put all the effort I could into it and actually, I got waitlisted in two schools, in Chicago and Duke. 
And Chicago actually put me under a lot of stress because they put me also, um, they put me in two wait lists, in the normal wait list and then wait listed for the summer. So yeah. I went to Chicago just in order to try to shake hands with the head of admissions and I made a video and I talked to many students. I really put a lot of effort into it. Mm -hmm. So the frustration was huge. I guess that I could put up with the frustration and, and resume the application process because I really believed in my dream and I really believed that I had done some mistakes that I could uh, correct. So I, I really had to be rational and see the things that I could do different and search for alternatives in order to, to reach what I wanted. Uh, well, well, what were one of these, I mean, some of these mistakes that you said? I yeah. Mean, well, what did you sure. notice, I mean, like in your, that kind of went wrong there? Because a lot of students don't really know or never find out. I mean, I think you're one of the lucky ones to have found out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, sure. Uh, first, I guess that I didn't take the GMAT seriously. The first time I started to study for, for the test, I took um, an absence from work, an uh, unpaid absence, and I stayed three months at home in which I basically had to study 100% of the time, but I actually didn't do that. I mean, I thought I was in some kind of vacation and I studied a little bit and did other stuff. I guess that the thing was that I didn't take the test really seriously. It lacked uh, humility for me. Mm -hmm. And it was only when I just did this very strict work plan that I could get the grade I wanted. So I had this Excel spreadsheet in which I had uh, the books I had to read, uh, um, I don't know, some performance factors that I structured for myself in order to monitor my performance and see if I was really reaching the short-term goals that I had to reach, you know? Wow. And <laughs> yeah, <laughs> hey, I, you, I had you, to do that. <laughs> <laughs> you took it down to like a strategic level there. Yeah, yeah, I guess that's a consultant thing. <laughs> 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 but it was good. I mean, it worked. And, and then another mistake I did was applying for too many schools. I guess that seven schools is too much. I would have applied to five schools maybe, and I would have given uh, more focus on the important factors of choosing a school, which is certainly the school's culture. So I guess I didn't pay a lot of attention to the important aspects of choosing a school. One of them is certainly the school's culture. I mean, you have to talk to people and find out if the school has the right fit uh, with you because they're certainly going to think about the fit when they're choosing you. I didn't take a lot of attention in terms of, of school's culture. I, I basically chose seven schools looking in rec ranking lists also, uh, still talking about things I could have done mm -hmm. differently uh, the first time. The third thing would have certainly chosen someone else in order to help me with my essays. Because in Brazil, I have this person, uh, which is the counselor, which helps us uh, build our mm -hmm. essays. And the person that I chose wasn't really nice after I reached Paulo which is the counselor that helped me for the mm -hmm. second time. I found out how good that person can be in terms of finding the important aspects about uh, how the in, difficulties in your life have helped you make you who you are today and also to connect your stories because I guess that in the first time that I applied, my stories didn't build like a very coherent profile, yeah. you know? Yeah. It's also about, yeah, he always says, Paulo says, connecting the dots. And I think that makes yes. sense. You, yeah, everything needs to connect your past, your present and your future. And it needs to tie in well with why you want an NBA and everything. So, and Paulo Cesar Moraes, I mean, yeah, he's yeah. he's really good. He's, he's he, he was one of the interviewees, very first interviewees on this podcast. Oh, yeah. Episode good. number two, yeah. I interviewed. I'm going to listen I, to I that. interviewed my big <laughs> boss. By boss, no, yeah, but he's amazing. I mean, just we've we've been having a great year here. So, but that's good to know that you had such a positive a positive result from from the hard work that we put in. And I like how that you were able to connect the dots. I mean, that's pretty that's pretty good. How did you? I mean, you, know, you, you were talking about the culture and the fit. What did you do to figure out the culture of the schools? Well, I guess it's pretty much about talking to people. I mean. 
I recommend that people visit the school, but I guess that you can only find out about the school's culture by getting to know their people. So normally previous and current students are very helpful. Everyone I tried to reach has been really nice. I went to some lunches with people. I made some Skype calls. People uh, really want to talk about their experience in business schools because normally it, it is like the best year in their lives. So yeah, I guess it's about talking yeah. to people. I, I remember one of another in a, another interview, students told me, you need to like the people, you know, the alumni that you talk to. If you don't like them, then you're looking for the wrong school. You know, does that have any, does that resonate with you? Yeah, I guess that resonates a lot. I guess that people from INSEAD, I mean, when they talk about INSEAD, they have a different sparkle in their eyes. It's really, you know, it's really impressive. I, I haven't seen anything like that about any other You're school. not the first person who said that. That's funny. <laughs> yeah, no, I've had two other people say that when they visited in Seattle or they talked to somebody from in Seattle or when they talk to somebody from in Seattle, there's a sparkle. I think that should be like their new motto. Sparkle. <laughs> yeah, I guess that uh, people that go to in Seattle, they want to live 100% of the experience. They're not there only because of the professional reasons. They really want to get to know each other, to connect. And they have this very collaborative spirit. So, and also because they're living in this bubble, I guess, because Fontainebleau, I don't, I don't know what they have besides in Seattle, they don't have a lot. So you don't have any option. You just have to connect with those people. And it's a hundred percent of the MBA experience. It's not like living in a big mm -hmm. city. I'm actually going to be visiting in Seattle next year. Yes. Really? Um, actually, I am going to London Business School for a conference, um, for an AGAC conference. Uh, hopefully, I'll be invited. So, But I'm planning on going. Mm -hmm. And if I do go, uh, since I'm right next door, I would like to visit INSEAD and Bocconi. Bocconi is another school I would really wanna, want to get to know. So you went through this difficult application process. You figured out the cultures of the schools. Now, out of seven schools, you figured, ah, I'm going to only apply to five. It's better. Did the second time you applied, uh, and the second time you applied, how many schools did you apply to? Actually, I applied only to INSEAD. Because what happened is that I found out that I didn't want to give up on my dream. Like, I don't know, November, December of last year. And then when I decided that, I just wanted to go as soon as possible. So I reached at Paulo and told him, uh, which school can I go now? Which schools do I have the option of going as early as possible? And then he told me, Thais, there is Colombia and there is INSEAD, uh, which have this January term in which you can enter earlier. Uh, because most schools, you, you should start in September. So what I did was research about INSEAD and about Colombia. Actually, I, I visited mm -hmm. Colombia. I don't know, I talked to those people and I, I figured that uh, Colombia wasn't for me. It sure is a very nice school, but I, I just, when I started to talk to these people from INSEAD, I, I don't know, something just told me that this the, is the, the right sparkle school. sparkle in their eyes. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess it was a spark. That's awesome. That is awesome. So you only applied to one school. Yeah, in the end, I didn't even apply. You went all or yeah. nothing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They asked me that in Seattle. Ah, they did, <laughs> huh? And then I'm sure they, yeah. liked, they liked your answer. No, because <laughs> usually, yes, you know, usually really. when... It's funny because, you know, just in the last month, I may have given interview coaching lessons to four or five students who applied to INSEAD and Columbia, both with the one-year program. So I think that's one of the questions that they always ask during the interviews. And most of, mm -hmm. most of the students will probably say, you know, oh, I also applied to Columbia, but not applying to Columbia may have you know, giving you a little bit more leverage. I'm only, yeah, because yeah. Yeah, it's convincing, <laughs> you know, I want to go to INSEAD. Oh yeah, what other schools did you apply to? Just INSEAD. No, and they even asked me, uh, what are you going to do if you're not admitted? <laughs> what did you say? I told them that I would apply for the September program, that it was my dream and I wouldn't give up on that. Well, he liked it. He, he nice. <laughs> nice. Yeah, INSEAD, INSEAD has actually two interviews. So there's Second one, they ask more for your fit. Which one of the two did they ask you? The first one was with a very senior person and it was very informal. 
And the second one was with a person that is actually a professional recruiter. Uh, both there are mm -hmm. alumni. But this woman, she asked me to send her my essays, which is something the school does not recommend. So I was really a bit shocked with that. I mean, why did she want to read my essays? But I sent the essays. Yeah. I mean, and then it was funny because I guess maybe she had already made the decisions before the interview because when we got to the interview, she didn't ask a lot. I mean, she mainly talked about her experience mm. there. So both were very informal yeah. at the end, you know? Nice. Once in a while, you get lucky like that. Yeah. Yeah, usually INSEAD interviews are, are less formal and more conversational. They really try to get to know you. So I think that's, they try to get a feel for, you know, the type of person you are and to see if you have that sparkle in your yeah. eye. Yeah. I've heard that INSEAD's interviews, they evaluate if they would want to have you in their class, I mean, uh, alumni. I don't know. That's something I heard. It's not like official, yeah. but it makes yeah. some I'm sense. I'm still trying to make friends with some with an with a, an official interviewer and then and then I, if I can get <laughs> yeah because I have friends from other schools you know so you know I try to get some inside information it's more secretive than the CIA so <laughs> really <laughs> I didn't know that now um, once you got accepted though how did that feel what was that feeling like for you Oh, it really feels um, amazing. I mean, and after uh, those two years in which, I don't know, I had this dream that I, I couldn't really, I don't know, uh, make it happen. Now it has happened. So I can say that maybe I'm not 100% still convinced that I'm in, you know, because it's really, it's yeah, really the, crazy. The coin hasn't fallen. Yeah, yeah not completely. Well, <laughs> Let me just fill out for the listeners out there that doesn't, you know, that don't speak Portuguese. This idiom is, you know, ah. the a ficha não caiu. It's, a, it's only a yeah. Brazilian uh, expression. Yeah, a ficha não caiu, which means uh, the coin didn't <laughs> drop. Like, you know, when you want to make a phone call and you have to, <laughs> um, you put drop in a coin into the telephone, you have to wait for it to fall before you can get a ringtone and kind of, anyway, we're going off track here. <laughs> um, it's just because I'm, I'm, I'm thinking up with this. I'm, I was trying to get to this next question, which is the following. Okay. Because I'm very interested in this whole triathlon thing. I mean, not for me to do, but I think I think it's just you're one of the first <laughs> triathletes that I've ever really known. You know, so you know it's pretty cool because uh, I really okay. admire you know what you guys do, and and it's it's, mm -hmm. it's very difficult. So, what do you think are like what are the what's the relationship between triathlon and MBA application process? You know, like mm -hmm. how do you make that relate, you know, that, that correlation? Yeah, I guess that triathlon and any other sports in which you really practice uh, the training seriously, I guess it's about um, training hard, keeping the focus, having a lot of discipline and knowing that all these things, they do pay off in mm -hmm. the end, you know. Sometimes they're going to pay off. Uh, it doesn't matter how long. That's how... Uh, running and triathlon have helped me. So I guess it's um, really about knowing that it's going to pay off sometimes. You just have to keep the focus. Keep the focus. Yeah. And you know, like with triathlon, so you, you only train running though. You don't train the swimming and the... And the no, 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 I do. I, I just said running because I've been running, training running for three years and it's my original passion. Uh -huh. Uh, I've been swimming for two years and I have started cycling for about six months. So triathlon, it's only six months and uh, running three years. So. Do you plan on competing? I have already done my first triathlon um, competition. It was the sprint triathlon, which is the shortest, but it was really nice. I mean, I'm loving it. I was thinking something different. I was like, it must you must have suffered, but you know. Two different mindsets. Yeah, but yeah, I guess suffering is really part of, of the pleasure, I guess. <laughs> yeah, no glory without sacrifice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, do you, are there any triathlon clubs over at INSEAD? Uh, can you believe they don't have triathlon or running clubs? Oh my goodness. You know that yeah, you can but, start up a new club there. Yeah, that would be awesome. that's an opportunity for me. Sure. That is. You can call it Thais's Triathlon Club. And you, <laughs> and you will be famous for the rest of INSEAD history. <laughs> Yeah, I'm certainly going to be running uh, Paris uh, half marathon uh, in March of 2015. Oh, That's going to be nice. Nice. Now, what is it that you're very, very excited about as far as your MBA experience? I know you haven't started it yet. I mean, you're you're right now in the process of, of trying to get there. But what is it that you're looking forward to? 
Mm, I think that what most uh, attracts me is the connection I'll have with people from all over the world. I mean, first, I guess that the culture shock is going to make me grow a lot personally and professionally because I'm going to have a lot of new perspectives on everything. Mm -hmm. And also um, about uh, this friendship aspect. I mean, I'm going to have friends uh, living all over the world. I'm going to have to travel a lot with them. So, yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah, because I mean, you know, uh, a lot of the the best moments of an MBA experience, it's, it appears to be outside of the classroom. I mean, you, there are amazing, amazing uh, knowledge to be gained from within the classroom, but a big part of your experience comes from everything that goes on around it. You know, so I think that's important. It's important to be able to take advantage of the diversity they have there internationally. Yeah, yeah, sure. And everyone seems to be nice. I mean, everyone who I talked through WhatsApp yeah. uh, in the last weeks, I mean, I have already met some Brazilians uh -huh. that have been admitted and everyone seems really nice and looking forward to get there as early as possible. <laughs> have you guys, have you, have you all, you know, met for like a happy hour or something? Yeah, me and the Brazilians, we have done already two happy hours and we have like a private Brazilian WhatsApp group in which we exchange information. Secret information. <laughs> no, no, it's like more um, practical information for us, such as the visa process, for instance, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you're doing, you're going through the visa process now, right? Actually, I haven't started it yet, but I should have already started <laughs> It's in my to-do list. You know? <laughs> yeah, it's on. Yeah, it's it, it has to be. I mean, when are you leaving? No, I'm I'm only leaving in the end of December or beginning of January. Classes start in the fifth of January, so I still have time. Okay, okay, so there's time. Yeah. Right now, you have to you have to finish your big project. Yeah, I'm going to have my I'm going to finish my big project only in November, so I should be pretty much dealing with everything. Uh, all along. <laughs> yeah. Well, after you were accepted, then what, what, are, what are the next challenges? What are the next steps? Because, you know, we, when we talked before our interview, you had mentioned that, that you didn't realize that there were so many things you had to do before you go. What, what, what are... What yeah. Are... First, I guess the most important thing is to guarantee your place at uh, INSEAD or the business school you, you have been admitted to. Because they ask you to make uh, a transfer or a credit card payment. Um, and it was something that I had no idea. I mean, how would I do that? Because I didn't want to pay a lot of charges or taxes. And depends depending on the mean that you paid, you have to pay more taxes. Yes, yes. In Brazil, uh, whenever you make an international transaction through your credit card, you, we pay, what, 6.5? something percent yeah, on, yeah yeah on top of that's called the iof tax i mean i don't know how it is in other countries but it gets expensive you know the, so you're, you're right on that you wanted to weigh your options before you pay so yeah and i have i had to find uh, which bank charged better exchange rate for for me so and i also had the situation that my bank manager didn't know a lot about this type of transaction what and how is that possible? How does a bank manager not know? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and then she told me, Thais, here you don't have to pay imposto de renda, which is a tax. Income tax. That is charged, that is charged over, um, in, in transfers above uh, 20,000 reais. Okay. And she told me we didn't have to pay for that. And I said, okay, so let's do the transfer. And we did it. And then she found out that actually we it is applicable. But then the bank had to pay for it because she gave us like wrong information. So it was not very simple. <laughs> yeah, no, I think because that's that the limit for that is like four or five thousand reais, right? Reais, not twenty. Twenty thousand. I'm, I think I'm not. Two. I'm not sure about the rule right now. <laughs> yeah, too many rules. Too many rules yeah, here. Too so many it makes rules. <laughs> so I had to make this this transfer in order to guarantee my place, which was the most important thing. And then I started to see the house in which I'll be living in. Mm -hmm. And there are uh, many websites uh, which contain information about the, the houses that are available there. But I talked to some former students in order to get their opinion on those places. And I have already uh, paid for, for two months of rent 
uh, to guarantee, sorry, for rent uh, for January and February. Mm -hmm. And I have already guaranteed my, my house there. Nice, nice. You, you're going to rent a house. No, sorry, it's not a house. It's actually a room in a, <laughs> okay. a house that has uh, rooms for eight people. Wow. I'm going to be living with other people, yeah. Nice, with eight or well, seven other people then. Yeah, yeah, that's going to be something new for me. That's I cool. have no idea who's going to be living with me. I mean, I think I'll only find that out when I get there. Oh. But yeah, that's exciting. <laughs> that is, it is, it is, it is. I mean, you know, I mean, it depends. It depends on your point of view. But I mean, I have, I know people who prefer their privacy, but hmm. um, I mean, I can say when in college back in San Diego, I lived in a, uh, in a, in one house with four other women. It was me and four other women. Wow. Yeah. At first How I thought, like? yeah, at first I said, wow, too. And then I found out just, you know, hair everywhere. I think that's one thing. It's just oh, hair everywhere. Okay. Yeah. Like normal things about women. Yeah. <laughs> And then another another second thing, just when women who are living together, it seems like their um, their periods uh, synchronize. Oh, that's true. And it hits at the same <laughs> time, everyone. So there was there was a one there would always be that one week where all four of them would just be yelling at me. <laughs> I was the punching bag. <laughs> wow, that must have been hard. Yes, that was a, that was difficult. That traumatized me. So anyway, let's go back to, to you, though. The story is about you here. Uh, so you, you know, you talked about the visa process, your housing, your housing, which is you actually found, you know, you had a, you found an apartment very or, or a room very quickly. I mean, I know a lot of students who take a take a long time to find, mm. find a place to live. Yeah, because I am a very planned person and I was really afraid that I would miss a nice place. So I just wanted to do this as soon as I could. So I browsed a lot. I talked to some people and I'm also straight to the point. So I just wanted to make this decision and, and be, I don't know, relaxed about that. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. now I'm, uh, I know I'm, I have a place to live and, and that's okay. Nice. Is it far from your school? Is it far from the school or close by? No, that was actually something that it was like the most important factor for me was being close to INSEAD because, well, it gets really cold uh, in France in some times of the year mm -hmm. and I don't want to, to have a car. So I just wanted to be as close as I could. You can run there. It's like 500 meters, I guess. Wow, wow, that's close. Well, congratulations on finding a great, you know, a great <laughs> housing. Um, you know, usually a lot of people have difficulties with that. And I hope, you know, living with seven other people you know, you are able to still not only study, but enjoy every moment of the of your MBA there. Yeah, sure. I mean, I hope it's a nice house. From what from what I've seen through the website, it <laughs> must be. <laughs> but we, yeah. we will know that until January. <laughs> yeah, you have to be careful of Photoshop. The pictures can lie. Yeah, but I think it should be pretty good. I think it's, you know, I, I don't hear many students complain like, you know, it, it's too far off. So what else? Uh, what else do you have to do after you are accepted? I guess I guess that's pretty much it. I mean, from what I know, mm -hmm. do that's you take it. any? The do you take visa, any shots? The housing, the transfer. Like vac shot? Yeah, like vaccine shots or like for. No, I guess the people that are going to believe in Singapore must do that, but not people that will be living in Fontainebleau. Ah, nice. Okay, so that's yeah, one. Yeah, I'm not sure. Thing. I'm not sure, but maybe. Okay. And what are you doing with your apartment here? Mm, actually, I live with my mother. So she's going to, to live here on her own. Oh. <laughs> yeah. That sucks for her, though. You know, she's going to be alone. Or is she excited, too, that you're mm, going? She has kind of some mixed feelings because yeah. she saw my suffering and she's happy for me. But, yeah, she's certainly going to miss me. But I have told her she must visit me. I mean, there's a lot of time for visits. Visit you and the seven other people yeah. living with you. Yeah, she's going to stay at a hotel, I guess. <laughs> ah. <laughs> no, that's, that, that would be enjoyable. Right now, how are you managing all your time? Because, you know, yes, you are waking up at like 4.30 a.m. It's just one of the things that, that I think really, really bog, bog students down is, is time management. You know, do you have any tips on how you can, how students can organize and plan when they have such a, you know, there's so many things to do, like, you know, visa process, finding an apartment, 
finishing up the paperwork and then working on big projects at work and going out for 10 kilometer runs. What can they do to plan their day? Yeah, I guess what I did for the GMAT uh, really worked for me, which was uh, establishing everything you have to do, uh, setting the timelines and sticking to, to the work plan. It can't go wrong, you know, mm -hmm. you just have to stick to the plan. It sounds so easy for, you know, like for you to say that. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it's because, you know, some people have difficulty in doing and scheduling and sitting down. Yeah, and... I know. But I mean, for the GMAT, uh, I mean, coming back to the GMAT story, GMAT is a test uh, in which you have to be really focused and intense about your studies. Otherwise, you lose, I don't know, you lose track of what you're doing, you know, you just forget sure. things. Yes, yes, true. Thank you. I have one final question, though, because our time is actually running out. If you had a time machine and you could go back to when you were applying, what would you say to yourself? Mm. I guess that I would have told myself that things uh, will work out sometime or the other. Uh, my effort uh, would pay, pay off, you know, sometime. Mm -hmm. Because that's it, because I was really desperate and, and frustrated and thinking that it would never work out. Now I'm here and I'm happy, so happy about INSEAD. And it was a school that I didn't choose to apply in 2012. And I'm convinced that INSEAD is the best school for me. So I guess that things happen in, in the time that they should. That is true. Out of the first seven schools you applied to, INSEAD was not one of them. No, it wasn't. You didn't make it to any of the seven, but then you've, you know, it's, it's sometimes it's, it's fate, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe in that. It's I really meant, do. Yeah, it was meant to be. Yeah, I'm sure I'm going to be really happy there. So, I mean, now I see that it all pays off. <laughs> yes, yes. And I think that's great that you would go back in time and motivate your own self and to, you know, reassure The effort that you put in. I think that's awesome. Yeah. And, it's, uh, and I think INSAD will be amazing. That's one, that's one of the reasons why I really want to visit next year if I go to London for the conference. INSAD, I mean, from what I hear, mm -hmm. INSAD is amazing. Yeah, I'm really excited. Yeah, I'm excited for <laughs> you. What well, is, you know, we at the NBA, NBA Wire, we just want to thank you so much for, you know, making your time available to us and for also enduring through a couple of dropped calls because the internet today is not functioning as it should. Um, you know, I'm, I can assure you that somewhere in the world, a candidate listened to our interview today <laughs> and got excited about INSAD and also received the boost in his or her energy. So why don't you just take this like final moment and give a shout out to anyone you want uh, or to your school and also let us let our listeners know how they can reach you. Yeah, uh, no, first, uh, I guess I am the one who has uh, to thank you, Matt, for this opportunity of sharing my experience. And I really hope that I can help at least someone that is in a similar situation that I was in Uh, two years ago. And it's really good to talk about my experience and I'm really happy to talk about that. Well, I have to say that uh, prospective students should keep their focus and really believe that uh, it's going to work out. Also, I would like to wish you all the luck and tell you that you can reach me through my email, which is thais.p.xavier at gmail.com. Thais uh, spells T-H-A-I-S and P as in perfect. Okay, as in perfect, huh? Yeah. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you, Matt. Well, citizens of the wire, there you have it. Uh, stop by the website, send me your feedback and questions at www.thembawire.com. This is Mateo Chang signing off. Thank you for listening, and I will see you on the next episode of the NBA Wire. Thanks for tuning into the NBA Wire. Would you like to know more? Visit us online at thembawire.com today and leave your questions and feedback. While you're there, sign up for an exclusive free audio series to help you strengthen your NBA interview. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time on the NBA Wire. NBA Wire.